Good morning. Welcome to the Morning Touch. I'm Darwin Campbell. The Morning Touch is brought to you by the Chaplaincy for the Homeless and the FSBC in Glendale. Just as promised, we're going to start with part one in this series, giving you just the facts about the second coming of Jesus. And we're going to start from John chapter 14. This is one of the first places where we learn about Jesus' great promise about his coming again. If you have your Bibles, follow along with me. The Bible says this, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. My friends, in John 14, we are truly encouraged by those words. What greater promise than to have a promise from the Lord himself about his intentions for you and me? When I think about this as a child of God, as a believer, I am truly encouraged, and you should be too. Because what this passage says is what we're going to deal with in this first section. Jesus Christ is coming again to claim his own. When he said, I go to prepare a place for you, he's talking to his disciples, but he's also talking broader to those who believe in him those who follow him, those who are faithful in their walk and in their faith. He goes to prepare a place for us so that he might receive us unto himself. Christ returns from heaven after preparing a place for you and I. He's already told you that in his father's house, it's not just one house, in his father's house, it's not just a courtyard. He says, in his father's house, there are many mansions, many mansions. And in each of those mansions, rest assured, you could have a set of keys if you're faithful. In his father's house, there are many mansions. One of them could be yours if you're faithful. We're not talking about being priced out of a real estate market. We're talking about a home that belongs to you, a home that's promised to you, a home that has been bought for you. How many of us would not enjoy someone spending $200,000, $400,000, or even $1 million on a piece of property with a mansion and a home, and they walk up kindly to you and say, I didn't plan on living there. I bought this for you. I bought this for you. It's all yours. Think about what Jesus has done. Jesus lived and Jesus died and he sacrificed himself on the cross, John 3, 16, to give you and I an opportunity to have eternal life. And at the end of the all, here's what he says. I bought this mansion for you. Here are your keys. Go in to the courtyard. Go in to the mansion and enjoy what I have prepared for you, the place for the faithful. That's right. Jesus is building a mansion for you. The question is, are you sending up your timber? Are you doing what it takes to hear that great word, well done? I don't know about you but I want to hear well done. I don't know about you, but I am in full anticipation of the keys that I will receive someday. I don't know about you, but I look forward to that glorious and grand day when he tells me to enter into the gates and he says, here's your keys, enjoy your home. My friends, there's no greater promise and there'll be no greater fulfillment than knowing 
that Jesus has prepared the way. You know, in John 14, 6, he says this, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. The question that we want to ask today, as we look at just the facts surrounding his second coming, Jesus went away, but he's coming back again to fulfill the promise of giving you those keys. The question is, do you want the keys? The question is, do you want that free gift, that mansion that's been prepared for you and for me? Because he is coming back again to claim his own. You know, I'm reminded of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 17, which simply says this, we will be translated at his kingdom. We will be changed. And the righteous who are in him, who are alive, will be caught up in the air to meet the Lord with him in the air. You know, whether you're alive when Jesus comes back or whether you're lying in the grave, both those who are alive and both those who are in the grave will come forward. The dead in Christ will rise first, and then those remaining on the earth will go to meet him in the air. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to that great spiritual Uber ride because that's going to be a great Uber ride as we will jump and rise with him in the clouds. When we meet him in the air, he will carry us away to that great kingdom. The sad part of that we those who will be left behind. But we're going to talk about that in another episode of The Morning Touch. But right now, child of God, I want you to be fixed and focused on the promise. Jesus is coming back. Jesus is going to receive his own. Jesus and you and I have an appointment to meet him in the air on that great day. So no matter what happens between here and now, no matter what happens between now and then, my friends, the word of the day is for you to focus and be faithful on the promise that someday you're going to receive those keys because it's a fact he's coming back. It's a fact he's coming back to claim his own. You want to be in that number? Then fix, focus, and be faithful. Fix, focus, and be faithful. Because if you fix, focus, and be faithful, you have something great up the road waiting for you. But it's up to you to go get it. It's up to you to receive it. It's up to you to anticipate it. It's up to you to enjoy it. But now is the time, and the day is the great day of salvation. You have heard the truth. You have heard the voice. Do not turn your heart away, as some did. Do not harden your heart, as Pharaoh. Jesus was here. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. Jesus is coming back. That's the fact. Are you willing to fix, focus, be faithful, and prepare to enter in the courts on that great day? You know, the Morning Touch is brought to you by the Chaplaincy for the Homeless and the FSBC in Glenville. Today, we encourage you to fix, focus, and be faithful and prepare for that great day when the Lord will be revealed from the clouds and you will go to meet him in the air. Oh, grand and glorious day. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We will shout the victory. See you next time on The Morning Touch.